Hi there, welcome to another Photoshop tutorial with psdbox.com. I'm quite excited about uh, today's tutorial because uh, it solved me a problem that I had for a uh, for a uh, quite long time now. And what I will show you today is how you can incorporate the original shadows of a stock image uh, on a on a composition like this one. And I found a solution on a on a really old article that I found on the internet if I can find the link I'll put that on the on the video description so you can uh, read it if you want to and that article gave me an idea of how I could uh, uh, use that technique which I think it's called uh, contrast ma masking uh, to incorporate the shadows there and make a sort of a mask um, I'll show you that uh, in a second I have this uh, a really simple composition here. Uh, I have a model and a background and what I want to do is I have here the original image. What I want to have is this uh, shadows, uh, the original ones um, on this background but without uh, having the background, uh, this gray background obviously. It's important that uh, you have both uh, images are the same size otherwise uh, uh, the shadows uh, will not match. So you have uh, to keep that in mind. So the problem, um, the problem with this is that uh, you cannot use a layer mask uh, to have this a uh, soft shadow on the new background without having the texture, uh, and you cannot use blend modes because uh, it it usually don't look too nice. So I'll show you a technique um, to have these original shadows on a separate layer and uh, to make them look uh, realistic. So the first thing I'll do is deactivate the model layer and I'll work uh, on the original one. And the first thing you need to do is turn this into into black and white. So go to image adjustments. Uh, you can use black and white um, or you can use a hue saturation and the saturate. Black and white gives you more control depending on the on the image on the background that you have. Uh, in my case it's all gray and uh, none of the uh, of the channels here really help me. Uh, if my background uh, would be green, for example, I could um, decrease, um, I could make the background uh, darker and that would help me, but in this case it's not really important, so I'll click OK. And the next thing I want to do is invert the image, so I'll press Ctrl I to invert the image, and now you can see that the shadows are uh, becoming uh, are white. Um, you could leave the image on normal, but I like to see the the shadows um, white. And the next thing that I'll do is use uh, levels. So press Control L to load uh, the levels. And what I want to have is make the background dark and keep the shadows white. So I'll drag uh, I'll drag this slider like that to make the background uh, as dark as possible. And also the midtones. And now you can see that the shadows, uh, these are the shadows, become brighter and brighter and you can use the highlights slider to make them even brighter like that. And click OK. And once you have an image like this, press Ctrl and I again to uh, invert the selection again, to invert the image again, sorry. And you should have something like this. Now this depends on the image, um, this works a lot better. Uh, with images uh, that are that have a solid background, um, if you have a really busy background, it might not work uh, really well. And once you have that, create a layer mask for this, and change the blend mode of the layer to multiply. And now we start to see something here. And in order to adjust this, I will reactivate the model layer, and since they are the same size or uh, they should be the same size uh, the model layer is a bit smaller but uh, we will mask this part and it will not be visible so reactivate this layer go back to the to the original layer select the layer and load the levels again and now all you have to do is uh, readjust uh, play with these sliders until uh, you make the background disappear and keep the shadows so I'll make the the midtones a bit brighter and let's see with the highlights make the highlights even brighter as well and maybe on the bottom slider but let's see what we can do with that 
Uh, I kind of burnt those shadows there, but okay, something like that, and click OK. And now uh, with this layer mask, you can refine this because if I deactivate the model layer, you can see that we still have the shadows and this dark parts here, which we don't need. Obviously, if these are exactly the same size, they would not be visible, but that's why I created this layer mask, and now I can mask these parts here that I don't need. I'm only interested in uh, in the shadows here, so I'll mask all this uh, area here. Okay, something like that. Okay, so now I have the shadows. You can, of course, play with the with the opacity levels and make the uh, the shadows um, less intense but I like to keep them uh, fairly dark. So that's that's how this technique works. The reason why we don't see the background is because we have the background uh, which is white. I'll deactivate the layer mask for a second. Everything that is white will not be visible because we have the multiply blend mode and everything that is white will become invisible. And if you have the layer mask and mask the parts that are still visible, uh, you have a lot of control over how that shadows look. So uh, let me see a before and after. So without the shadows and with the shadows, and I still see some areas that need masking here. So again, before and after, and still some masking there. So that's uh, how this technique works. I hope you like uh, how it looks. Uh, these shadows are a lot more realistic than uh, anything that you can paint with the with the brush tool unless you're a really good painter but uh, I'll use this technique on my future tutorials so uh, stay tuned make sure you subscribe to my channel I have a lot of the tutorials coming up so thank you for watching and see you next time